guys, it's half, this is part three of my haul. If you want to see the other two parts, then you need to go and have a look on my channel, because they'll be there. Um, and yes, my, I have no makeup on, I look kind of like shit, but whatever. It is what it is. So this is part three of my recent combined haul from basically Target, Cosmetic Capital, and Osseo. Um, this is all nail polish, so if you don't like nail polish, then you might as well just click away now. No offense. None taken. So, let us get into this one. There is Orly OPI <sighs> NYX Maybelline Rimmel Essie and a couple of other brands as well. So, let's go. Let's, let's get into this. First of all, the one and only Essie. I was actually really unhappy about this because I bought... I got this one from this from Cosmetic Capital, and originally I had on a silver platter as well in the order. And then when I I thought I'd already put the order through, and then when I did put the order through, it was one of the ones that had been removed from the order, along with um, pineapples have peelings too, which was the main reason I was getting the order. And I didn't realise until after I'd actually put the order through, so I was a bit pissed off, quite frankly. However. I did get Leggy Legend, which is a relatively new polish, really, in, especially for me. Um, so it's kind of like the bronzy, goldy kind of thing. I was actually, I don't know, I have no luck with Etsy because the formula on this was kind of shit. And it was actually the first one of all of the nail polishes that are in like these videos that I swatched. And it's got a teeny tiny little brush and it didn't go on very well. It, the second coat was better, but for the price that you normally pay in Australia for these nail polishes, it I would expect a lot better for the formula. So, um, luckily, I didn't pay that much for it. I think I paid like three ninety nine for it or something. Otherwise, I wouldn't have bought it. Um, so, that's Leggy Legend. And I got one from NYX Girl. NYX Girls, which I've never actually had before. I've seen it on a few other people's um, YouTube channels. I was frankly kind of disappointed with it. Um, I don't think I'll be going out of my way to get any more. This is another one that came from Cosmetic Capital. This one is called Italian Dusk. It is a purple. Um, it's still kind of patchy after two coats. Um, it just did not go on particularly well, so yeah, not huge, not a huge fan of that one. From Rimmel, I have Roll in the Grass, which is from the Rita Aura collection. This was actually really pretty good. I really liked, I actually really like Revlon. Apart from anything else, they're brushes, in, particularly in these ones. I like a wide brush because I like to just do three strokes. And brushes in these are quite wide. Focus. Uh, they're quite wide and they're curved at the end as opposed to this Essie which has a very thin brush. It's just it's actually so much harder to paint lots of nail with a teeny tiny brush and you have a lot of nail to paint. Then I have one from Essence, if I can find it. This is called Chrome Paradise, I mean, not a bottle, I don't know if it's going to show you, but it's um, like a grey to purple, a bit like a Constellation from um, Central Colours. Except this one's formula is probably even... I mean, it goes on okay, it's just kind of sheer. Um, so what I've done is I've put black underneath one end of it so you can see it does improve it quite a bit. Two coats on its own is still see-through. A little bit disappointed with that one. Just, just, just a little tiny bit. I have one from um, OPI which is Suzy Sege Feng Shui, which is kind of like a very blue teal colour. Probably looks more blue than teal, but it is kind of more towards teal. Tiny bit patchy, a bit difficult to go on, but on the whole not too bad. 
Then I have three from Orly. I have Stone Cold, which is a, looks like a bright blue with sparkles in it. Just blue sparkles. It's, it's a bit sheer, quite frankly. Um, it's it's a bit sheer after two coats. Wasn't actually that impressed with it. It's a really beautiful blue. It's just a bit sheer. Then we have Ever Burgundy, which looks like this. And basically, it's just a burgundy. This one was way better. The formula was way better. Went on so much easier. So I really like that one. And the last one from Orly is Hot Shot, which will make my camera freak out. It is a very bright, dark orange, almost red. And it looks like that. The bottom, the end up here, actually has white underneath it, because I was trying to see if it would improve it. You can get away without it. Really. I mean, there is a little bit of a difference, but... It is a very good neon, I have to say. Quite like all these neons on the whole. And I have five from Maybelline. I have Glitter It, which is basically just a um, pretty sure it's iridescent. Might there might be a little bit of holographic in it. Um, it's just a silver topper. not want to focus. That's two coats on its own and then over the end I put black so you can really see it. Um, really pretty for Maybelline to come out with something like that. It's almost holographic. I think it it's missing like one colour so it's not quite holographic but still pretty effective. Then we have Wow Orange which is just a super bright orange cream from the 60 second line. 60 second line have wider brushes than the normal colour show, which is probably why they call it 60 second, is because it's much quicker to put on. Um, then I have Nebline, which when I saw it in the bottle, I was thinking that it was going to be kind of like ballerinas. Um, slipper kind of see-through pink kind of thing. I was actually expecting it to be sheer, but it's not. That's actually um, basically fully opaque in two coats. So I was pretty impressed by that. Yes. It's not often I find a pink that's like that, except maybe more about you. But Maybelline Color Show is quite a bit cheaper. Uh, and then we have Vivid Rose, which is from the normal uh, color show line, which is, it's as you can see, it's a little bit, little bit sheer. It's a bit jellyish, really. Um, basically, just a rose pink, bright rose, rose pink color. And the last one from Maybelline is Twilight Rays, which in the bottle looks like black with gold. The formula is a little off. the The base is just not quite working for it. Um, I mean, I think they thought they needed it to be fairly sheer for it to show through, but it's kind of patchy rather than sheer, which is just annoying. So you can see right there, you can see through spots of it. and The idea is good, but I've actually got one from BYS called Black and Gold, which does it way better. And finally, I have 10 polishes from um, Satin. Now, Satin is a... Um, they're part of the heat group, but they're also, um, what is it, Neon Cosmetics. So, they're basically, they're an Australian type brand. Um, I have a couple of loop liners from this brand. I got a 10 pack, uh, sorry, a 20, is that 10 pack? Yeah, a 10 pack that was like $10. So, they're all like a buck each. They're normally only um, a dollar seventy-nine on Cosmetic Capital. So, not particularly expensive. I think that they marketed more towards... Uh, like tweens, like younger girls, 
but some of them are actually really, really good, and I was actually really, really impressed. I wasn't expecting them to be fantastic for the price, and knowing that Satin is basically a budget brand in like, most places that you get it from. Um, so the first one is Satin, um, is number three. They do have names, but I don't, they're not on the bottles. I think I wrote them down somewhere, but I don't know where I wrote them down. But this one is basically like white satin sheets. Um, I put white under one end so you can see that it probably works better um, over the top of a more solid colour, um, using it more like a transforming effects. But if you don't like a frosty type finish, you probably wouldn't like this anyway, because it is very much a frosty type of look. Then we have number four, which is a <laughs> the kind of neon pink that makes cameras freak out. Bottle's kind of cute too. Um, on one end, I have put white underneath it just to see how it would go. So that's number four. And then we have number ten, which was one of the ones that was kind of a little bit disappointing. It looks like a really nice bright blue cream in the bottle, but it's pretty sheer at two coats. Three coats might actually fix it, but I usually only do two coats for swatches, so the colour's nice enough. It's just not quite as good as some of the other ones. We have number 11, which would be great if you happen to work in one of those kind of offices that doesn't really like you to wear nail polish too much and want you to wear something kind of not very obvious. This is number 11. I believe this one is actually called Dream Suede. Um, so it is that kind of camely suede kind of colour. It is pretty see-through, <laughs> but it's got a nice little bit of sheen to it. I quite liked that one. Then we have one of the better ones. In fact, this one is pretty brilliant, quite frankly. This one is number 16. Um, two coats, it is opaque. And it is super duper bright. And it's just a really nice orangey tone. Almost red. And a great formula. They don't stink either. Like they don't have that really offensive um, smell that some low-end nail polishes actually have. They actually pretty much don't smell at all, or they just smell like normal nail polish. I no, don't necessarily smell nail polish because I use it so much, but I can tell that something's really stinky, and these are not really stinky. The next one is number 21, which is pretty much one of my favourites from this line. It's a super dark blurple colour. Um, in the viewfinder at the moment it's looking very blue but it is purple. But it is really gorgeous. And in two coats it's basically it's maybe not quite opaque but it's dark enough that it's not really obvious anyway. And we have number 18 which it's another one of those that is a little bit disappointing. It might actually benefit from a white undie um, to make it more blue. Um, kind of like Make Waves from Sally Hansen. This one is number 18. It's kind of like a sea misty kind of greeny blue. And it is really pretty, but as you can see, it's certainly not opaque. Um, but it's still a really nice colour. And then we have number 30, which is another one which is actually pretty good. This one is a green. Uh, it's basically completely opaque in two coats. It's a nice cream formula. Obviously, satin does their cream formulas better than they do the shimmers, quite honestly. Um, then we have number 33, which is another cream which is kind of a, a peachy. It is not the same colour as the other peachy one. Um, like that's the, the pink, more pinky version. You see it's a lot more muted than that, and it's not as bright as that one. So this one is number 33. Really, again, a great formula, especially for a 
polish that's under two dollars a bottle and the last one is just a glitter topper it's got a slightly pink base to it, it has iridescent glitters in it and that's just what it looks like you can see over the black the iridescent shows up really really good it's a great little topper it's got a pretty good formula good um, glitter pay off and they disperse quite evenly across the nail so nothing to complain about there so if you're looking for a really budget friendly brand particularly if you're just like getting into nail polish or you've got a like a daughter who wants to get into nail polish it's i mean clearly these bottles are like the pink cap and the, the way that they're kind of more aimed towards tweens but there is nothing wrong with the quality of them and they don't smell terrible so that's always good. So that is the end of the third part of my haul. If you want to see any more of my stuff, then click the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to click the bell so you can get notified when I upload. Leave me a thumbs up if you like haul type videos and nail type videos. And leave me a comment down below. I try to respond to all comments. And I'll see you in my next video. See ya.